Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I'm your host, Sean Walshef, and this is a Cali BBQ Media production. And today we are here at the Carte Hotel in the heart of Little Italy, San Diego, with Chans Rock, Director of Food and Beverage. Uh, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute honor to be here at a brand new, incredible, beautiful property that just opened here it's in San pleasure. Diego. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you for coming on. So how does one become the director of food and beverage at such an exclusive property, something that the Hilton, they've come up with this Curio collection. Mm -hmm. So this Curio collection is kind of a lifestyle new brand that they wanna come and give maybe a digital native, somebody that's looking for a little bit more exclusive um, vacation, mm -hmm. you know, something where you're kind of looking for something that maybe when I come in, I mean, this is a digital hospitality podcast. So sure. things that we like to talk about is how do we, in the hospitality world, incorporate things like search into where do I want to stay? When I go with my wife and my kids, we're going to want to go somewhere where there's Wi-Fi, right? Sure, absolutely. And let's uh, tell us a little bit about that. So to answer your first question, uh, my background and how I got to the Carte was a little bit... Um, I have a tremendous background with Marriott and Hilton. I've worked in big boxes, but uh, about 10 years ago, I decided that uh, luxury and lifestyle was going to be the new direction of hotels. And so I started to work for independent hotel companies. Uh, I worked at the London and West Hollywood, and then I went up to Napa Valley and opened a couple of hotels up there. So most recently, it's been all about the individualized guest experience. And that's really what's led hotels into the whole luxury and lifestyle brand is how do we customize what the guest is looking for. You know, back when I started in this, <clears throat> you, you know, the hotel bus would show up or the uh, tour bus would show up and a hundred people would get off the tour bus and they would all go eat in your outlets or they would all go do one thing. And, you know, that's changed because of technology and digital media and things like that. Now, the bus still pulls up, but you have a hundred people going in a hundred different directions. And that's all been spurned by, you know, the need for digital technology and things like that. And so, <clears throat> The way that, it, that we embrace it here at the Carte is using it from really the moment that the guest uses the reservation. So Hilton is very big in making sure that we do direct bookings and that we as a hotel and we as a, as a brand can reach out to you and talk to you about all the things that we have to offer in the hotel instead of letting somebody like Booking.com or Expedia do that for us. And so, again, it really starts with the process of booking the hotel. You can use your, <clears throat> you can use your Hilton Honors app to get on. You can get your digital key. You can look at the ratings for the hotels. You can choose your rooms. You can do all of those things now that five years ago you really couldn't. You had to walk into the hotel. Sure, you had your, your reservation, but um, you really had to talk to them about your preferences. You kind of had to go see the room, what it looked like. You had to get uh, what, what was the view you were looking for. Mm -hmm. It was really a one-on-one -on -one experience, whereas now with digital technology, you can get online. You look at the hotel. You can look at the reviews, whether that's Yelp, whether that's Hilton. Whatever form you're using, you can then pick your room. You can look at your room online, see the views that you're going to have. A lot of, a lot of uh, hotels, including ours, will have 360 digital technology, so you can see the whole entire room. You can see the view. You can see exactly what you're looking for before you get into the hotel room. Moreover, you can use the same technologies to uh, your preferences. What kind of beds do you like? What kind of time do you, what time do you wake up? What, what breakfast items do you like to have? Do you like to have amenities? Where are those amenities going? What, when do you want those amenities? So. Again, to answer your question, the digital technology revolution has really been able to allow us to reach the guests in a way that we haven't before without having a person call them on the phone and ask all of these questions, mm -hmm. right? All you need to do is get online. Your app is going to ask you all the questions for you. It's not intrusive. You're going to tell us everything that you need. You're going to book your room. As soon as you come here, you're going to get your digital key, which allows you to skip the front desk and go to the room. Once you walk into the room, the television is going to be interactive, where it's going to tell you what's going on in the hotel. How are you going to order room service? When you do order room service, what are the preferences do you like? Do you want your room service to come in the morning? Do you want it to come in the afternoon? So it's really been about embracing different apps, different technologies, different booking agents for the hotels to enhance the guest experience. Well, I really appreciate you laying it out like that. I mean, that's literally why we started this podcast. And it's, it's so crucial in 2019 and moving forward that 
people start to understand that it's not about an invasion of privacy. It's about how do I customize that experience? Exactly. You know, and me as a single unit restaurant owner, we try to do that on a small scale, but then to come and see that Hilton, the leading global hospitality leader, is starting to incorporate that. Um, that's really exciting, you know, because then it allows you to build a hotel like this right. where you're building it not just based off of, oh, this worked maybe in New York. Let's go and open it in San Diego and see if it works. No, you actually can pull from data that you have from other properties here and you can actually figure out, hey, this is what the customer is looking for. You're absolutely this is right. what this is what the, the, the traveler wants. That's right. Um, carte means passport. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is literally a place. I mean, I know how important this is as a property. Mm -hmm. um, why was it important for you to, uh, were you applied or were you tapped for this position? Um, a little bit of both. So I worked for Interstate. Um, I love San Diego. I've spent a lot of time here. So I, I have a feel for not only what the guests are looking for, but the overall city and what it can offer. So, um, it's pretty easy to market San Diego. It really is. It really is. And, and as we embrace the technology, you know, that's what we really do is utilize, let's work smarter, not harder. And I think that most of us adapted to the technology and especially, um, you know, technologies that help us reduce costs and things like that out of uh, necessity. You know, back in the day, it was kind of a piece of paper. Then we went to the scheduling where we built it on Excel. Mm -hmm. And now through necessity, we really have schedulers like Hot Schedules or Hotel Effectiveness that really help us do those things. Do you guys use Hot Schedules? Uh, we don't. We have you our don't, own called you have Hotel own, Effectiveness. Okay, perfect. Which, so that's for all the restaurant properties? It is. It's for the whole entire property. Oh, the so, entire property. Yes, wow. we load our schedules in. It helps us understand business demands, business trends. We can have our team members here when we need them here instead of guessing and trying to understand. And again, that all comes from the first step of when you get on to make your reservation, right? All of that information gets fed into systems here at Hilton mm -hmm. that allow us to track what the guests are trying to do. Sure. And again, at the end of the day, it's about having the team members where they need to be when the guests are expecting them 100%. to be there. It's about giving the guests what they're looking for, right price, right price Price, right place at the right time sure and so technology really allows us to do that because again to your point marketing we can market when as soon as you come into the hotel if you have a, a Hilton honors app or if you have an Instagram account we can immediately start geo marketing you and, and sending you updates and sending you live feeds about what's going on and then asking you hey you know if you're gonna go to above ash and you're in and you're ha and you're hanging out up there why don't you tag us on your Instagram and oh by the way for doing that I'll give you a bottle I'll give you a glass of Prosecco or something sure. Something that's going to enhance your guest experience. Something that's going to let people know where you're at. And that's really what we find people are looking for nowadays with Facebook and Instagram. Absolutely. It's really about what am I doing, where am I at? Who's around me and how can I connect with them? How can I bring them to where I'm at and have fun with those folks? And so, again, your question was how do we use it? We utilize it in a, in a million different ways, it mm -hmm. seems like. you know, just, just in terms of marketing to the guests cost effectiveness for our hotel and you know most people don't think well you know your purchasing journal for your cost doesn't make sense to the guests well it really does because we're ordering and keeping on hand the things that the guests need and, and at the end of the day that's really what it is you know guests have extraordinary you know wants I guess in life and so for us to be able to understand what they are before they get onto the property again technology helps us do that without technology we would have to have somebody call and say hey well, you know what are you looking for in two weeks what's gonna yeah. what's gonna be your fancy and with technology we can I mean we can do it what in your opinion is the difference between customer service and hospitality Customer service is fulfilling what the guest is, what, you know, their expectations. Hospitality is going above and beyond what that is. It's really identifying what what the guests may be looking for that they don't realize yet. For example, um, we've had a number of people that have come into our hotel that try seafood because we're seated table. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily like something like octopus, but you know they hear good feedback about it through technology. Maybe it's a Yelp app, maybe it's on a, a, a piece done in Eater magazine or mm -hmm. something like that. They come in and try those things, so it broadens their horizons. It allows them to step outside of the box, which helps us because now we can have somebody that walks away from the hotel and says, "Oh my." God, gosh, I tried something new that yeah. I've never tried before. It was very inintrusive. Not, it was in my face. It was something that I could do on my own. I could choose whether I liked it or not. And that's really what we're looking for. Sure. <clears throat> so tell me about the three different um, restaurants, concepts that you have. Sure. And how you came about, how the Carte Hotel came about keeping them distinct 
for this hotel and for this area. Sure. So Watercolors is a seat at table. It's our three uh, meal restaurant for the most part. It was really born from, you know, the San Diego, the tuna fishermen, people that are here, the Glossermans that are out there, deep sea fishing, all of those types of things. It was really a nod to San Diego, the heritage, us trying to connect with not only Little Italy, but downtown San Diego mm -hmm. and what it has to offer. So, um, you know, Chef is really, Chef Caesar has really done a good job of making sure that we have uh, items that are a nod to Baja California, but still have a little bit of San Diego flair, you know, Caesar salads, things like that with his. So that's watercolors, a lot of different bright, fun things. Um, watercolors bar is in our lobby. It's, 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 a, it's an enormous piece. It is sure. meant to attract people. It's meant to stick out. And the reason that it is is for our cocktail programs, lots of, again, cool, fun things, the lighthouse, the black pearl, just different cocktails with herbs, but also lend something to San Diego. And the fishing culture, the sea, those types of things, the embarcadero, mm -hmm. just all of the things that San Diego has to offer. Then we have Above Ash, which is Above Ashes. It's amazing. It's a social club. It is very much, uh, it's indoor, outdoor space. You'll see, you'll get the shots. It has shots of the view of the bay. Sure. Um, the, the entrees up there are light, ceviches, kudos, things like that. The chef, again, has made sure that keep it seafood, definitely of the sea, born of the sea, but make it a little bit more fun, make it a little bit uh, easier to embrace ceviches and kudos up there. So that's above, that's above Ash. And then Fontavino is... Which is where we're recording right now. Correct. This will be our tasting room. Fontavino will have a menu that the chef will change up, will do fun things. We'll obviously have cheese and charcuterie and different things that go with wine. Um, but the chef is really going to make a menu that you, we can pair easily, whether we're doing King's Table tables in here or whether we're... King's Tables, what's that? King's Table is uh, a PDR, private dining room. Okay. So, you know, um, beverage companies will launch, let's say, you know, Crevassier will launch Lee Essence or something like that. They'll invite a large contingent of folks, whether that's, you know, restaurateurs such as mm -hmm. yourself or hoteliers such as myself. They'll come down, we'll have dinner. It'll be very nice dinner. It'll be intimate. They launch the product, they talk about it, and then obviously <clears throat> the people that are interested in it from there go on and sell the product. Oh, so, wow. Very, very cool. high end. And um, they're fun to do. And so the menu in here will be playful. It's going to be something that the chef can be creative and do different things based on what type of clientele we have in the space. And then tell me about the wine program. The wine program is going to be built out in several facets. So we're very much interested in having wineries from Temecula. Obviously, we're close to Little Italy. It's a nod to Italy. Temecula has some of the greatest Italian-esque uh, growing growing regions that there are here in California. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to roll them. And we also have uh, Valle in Mexico, which is the Napa Valley of Mexico right now, very, very much on the map and coming up. So uh, we'd like to build a partnership with them and, and allow them the opportunity to come, ha come here and showcase their wines. Also, it's very important, obviously, Napa Valley and Sonoma Coast. Most everybody that comes to California is very much interested in California wines. Sure. So rolling in some of the boutique wineries up there, like Prisoner and some of those italics, and um, some of those places that don't have huge names but have wonderful wine and juice, we can have them come down here, build a partnership. They can showcase their wines in here. They can pull people from San Diego that aren't familiar, build their wine club. And so it's very multifaceted. You know, there's not one direction where you know my ownership or my general manager is the chance this is what we want you to do really mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to sit down and collaborate what makes the most sense for San Diego what makes the most sense for the carte and obviously what makes the most sense for the guests what are they looking for sure and so all of that comes together we put all that information together we use technology to do that obviously mm -hmm. and then we roll out the product that we think is going to be the, the best and so so do you guys work with other Hilton properties within San Diego to see what they've done and what's worked or absolutely you do yeah networking with uh, my peers and counterparts is is big we do it across the industry but anytime that you're that you're launching something like a tasting room or or you know something of that nature you do want to network you do want to find out from your peers what's going on where mm -hmm. have they had success where have they had challenges so that obviously we don't make the same mistakes sure. that's the best part about being part of the Hilton world and interstate hotels for that matter because we have a lot of tools and resources we can draw from and so that really is the expectation reach out to those folks that have done it before mm -hmm. or have some experience and draw the knowledge from them. Do you have any mentors in your life? Somebody that taught you something that 
you, I do. You keep you keep with you. I do to this day. Um, I, I there's I had a general manager um, at one of my hotels in Utah who was very very close to me. He's passed on since then. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but he instilled a lot of things um, in me that really care carry with me today. Servant leadership is one of them. Setting the example, making sure that you're on the floor and that you're not asking people to do things that you wouldn't do. Making sure that when you do something, it's done correctly the first time. And for a number of reasons, obviously you don't want to have to go back, but you know, being the leader, being the department head, people are always watching. You, know, mm -hmm. you have guests watching you, you have team members watching you. And so, you know, instilling the integrity to make sure that everything's done correctly, to make sure that you're always there listening to your team members, making sure that you're giving the guests what they're asking for. Because at the end of the day, the two things that make the most sense to us is the guests and the team members. Mm -hmm. And if you take care of those two almost exactly the same, then you're going to have a successful business. At least in my experience, that's what that's what's drove my success anyway. Sure. I think there's a fine line, too, when you're talking about how do you prove to your team that you're willing to do something, anything that needs to be done, but also not always doing that and teaching them that those things need to get done even when you're not there. Right. So how do you find a, a, the line between micromanaging and macromanaging? You make sure that you're always demonstrating. So whenever you're talking to your team, you make sure that you have the largest audience possible. You make sure that you clarify what you're talking about. So when you're giving direction, it's important to give the message, but it's also important to follow up with team members and make sure the message that you gave them was received in the way that you wanted it to be. So I find that when we're giving lots of information, we give the information and then I try with my managers to go back individually to the team members and speak with them about what we've just talked about. And in some cases, if if it has to do with technology, say a, a micro system or a point of sale system, we'll actually go back and have that person show us what we were talking about. So again, do, tell, sh <laughs> tell, show, do, review, excuse yeah. me. And that's the most important thing, talking to our staff about it, following up with them, having them demonstrate that they understand what it is, and then making sure that the whole team can do it consistently. And how many team members do we have at Carte? As a, as a hotel? As a hotel. Uh, we're sitting at about 150. Wow, that's mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, and we'll grow, obviously, as the services grow and, you know, things expand. Our pool, our, our pool, um, uh, <laughs> what we're trying to accomplish at the pool mm -hmm. in terms of activations and things like that uh, with our partners. And so we'll add, as uh, again, as we get busier. This is a saltwater pool. It is. It's yeah. the only one in San Diego. Only one in San Diego. Yes. So why a saltwater pool? Um, it's it's very much in tandem with Fit Gym. It's mm -hmm. it's healthy for you. It's it's a lot better than chlorine. Obviously, the salt and things like that, or they help the minerals in your body. Sure. It also is a nod to the koi and lily ponds at Balboa Park. That's why it's a long. That's why it's long. And mm -hmm. So again, everything in the in the Carte Hotel has a story behind it. It was the designed, design. Absolutely, was designed and um, thought of to inspire. You know, thinking people asking questions. We want, we want Carte to be a hub, really, more than anything. We want people to come in, use the technology that we've been talking about today to experience the hotel firsthand. Mm -hmm. And then when they get to the hotel, having the team members here be able to expand and show them even more technology and what they can do while they're, while they're in the hotel. Sure. And then, obviously, make it so it's comfortable for them to want to go out and explore. We want people to go explore San Diego and Little Italy. It's all about our culture. It's in our DNA. We're a huge family here. It makes sense. The owner group picked Little Italy for a reason and that's the community around it and so we very much want to be a part of that and have our guests come experience the hotel go experience Little Italy in San Diego and then bring it back and basically hang out and talk you know yeah. what, what did you what what fun did you have out there what what were you doing what's gonna bring you back what was the thing that when you're on your airplane flying out of Lindbergh field that was like oh my gosh I got to go back to San Diego for this and how can we be a part of that I think one of those that's so important in everything that we do. I mean, we, as much as we love digital, it's that physical connection that you have and it's that memorable moment that you create. And those are the things that always bring us back to a certain restaurant or to a certain bar or to a certain hotel. It's, those are the things that really become that memorable family moment that you always cherish, right. you know? And I think one of the things that I'm fascinated with is how has the position of the concierge changed in the years since you started and to the world that we live in now because technically it's a vi you know it's a virtual concierge but but is. really there needs to be somebody still that's always that trusted person right right so a couple of things here you know 
we've all been noticed of the concierge as soon as you walk into the lobby they're right there um, again it was more out of a need for a couple different things empowering our team members so being able to give the front desk associates that are there the empowerment to know not only what's going on in the hotel but what's going on around the city also, you know, digital, again, what we're talking about here, digital had a huge impact on concierge. Pretty soon we could take um, multiple things and combine them into one app, one area that the guests can go to and we can track. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, it was empowerment and it was the use of technology that has um, refined the concierge. It's not gone away by any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely not. And if, if anything else, it's actually grown because of the things that we can use our digital platforms for. It's really, it's really transcended from, you know, can you make me reservations and, you know, my dry cleaning to, hey, where's the best spot in San Diego to go scuba diving? Where mm -hmm. is the best spot in TJ to go hang out and see whatever is going on down there so um, a lot of people think that it's gone away it hasn't it's really empowered us it's given us the opportunity to, to have other people experience different things in a hotel so that's great for our development and then obviously incorporating the platforms we all work so hard on you know in terms of technology making sure that we all have it going to the right place at the right time and then we have those folks that are in charge of it which are more than likely our front office folks sure making sure that they understand what it is and they can articulate the information I mean I think guess. that's one of the most important things that we try to teach to our staff at the restaurant is the technology en enables them to be a guide and the more that they know the more the better experience that they can give to our guests right. you know so when somebody starts to embrace the fact that I'm not just here you know to bring bags up up to the hotel room I'm actually here to let them know that you know I live here that there's something incredible happening right down at the waterfront park that you can go take your kids there for free this weekend you know right. those little bits of information could change someone's entire experience of San Diego 100% you know and one of the things that you did talk about was you know that concierge you're as as a hotel you're able to make partnerships with things that are happening in San Diego that possibly could give somebody staying at your hotel an advantage over somebody else Absolutely. You know, like once you, I don't, I'm sure you didn't have any partnerships with Kabo, but you know, when those things happen in San Diego, you're able to have access that other guests that are staying somewhere else might not have. You're absolutely right. You know, and I, I think that's probably one of the most exciting things that is happening now. Yes, I think again, when we talk about networking, when we talk about using different platforms, from my experience, what I see is, um, you know, success breeds success. When folks see that you're using things, different technology, when they see that you're networking, when they see that you're, um, complimenting them, they're much more helpful, they're much more willing to um, support and actually go above and beyond. And so that's what we found. Being here in Carte, being here in Little Italy, being the Carte, being a digital leader, making sure that we are trying to get out of the community and, and, and endorse those things, people really, they seem to gravitate towards those And things. I agree, I mean, success does breed success. And when you're thinking about it, if you go online to a place that you're going to visit and let's say their Facebook page isn't updated or their Instagram they haven't posted in 10 days or they don't have a story like those things that's they, a big it, it's a it's it's a big red flag for me sure. and it's a big red flag for my wife I mean we when we go and we're looking for daycares we went to Yelp to look for daycares and Yelp is you know that that's our that's our domain as, as a restaurant owner like that's where we need to be the best sure daycares you wouldn't think but the daycares that we went to they had up-to-date photos they had up-to-date information they had a link to their website that was mobile friendly I was easy to book a tour to go see you know I want to go see where my my son's gonna go be you know gonna be taken care of those things are, are crucial to success right and crucial to success moving forward right I think some of the fear that a lot of people have is that like we said earlier is that this technology is going to eliminate jobs when in fact I think it's actually going to create a lot more jobs. I think you're right. I think it'll enhance enhance jobs as well and mm -hmm. so you know areas where people may have found challenges before I think it'll really open minds and open doors um, you know as long as we embrace it again you know I, I I was one of those folks. I remember doing schedules on paper with pen. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and, you know, and I remember trans. You know, I remember transitioning into Excel and doing schedules on Excel and just thinking, "Oh my gosh, you know what I mean? This is going to save me so much time." Mm -hmm. And then again, the transition to what we're using now in terms of labor, you know, schedulers and productivity and things sure. like that is just another light year. And so, to your point, 
I think if you're not within the digital age, if you're not keeping your Facebook, your Instagram and things like that up to date, I think it is a huge red flag because people know the gravity and the importance of it nowadays. Yeah. So if you're not even going to pay attention to those things, what are the chances when I get to the hotel you're going to really pay attention to my little things Correct. that you know, often slip through the cracks if you're not on top of it. And so you're absolutely right. I think everybody uh, for the most part lives on Yelp these days. I think mm -hmm. it's important. I think, you know, it's really an open forum for people to be able to tell you what's going on, you know, and that is important for us much as it is for you. You know, if you can get people on there that are saying amazing things about your restaurant, there's going to be more people that are going to say more amazing things about your restaurant Correct. because it's going to open everybody's eyes. Where conversely, if there's people that are on there, my lights don't work, you know, for in our sure. example, that, you know, that there's no ironing board in the room. Who responds to those? Uh, engineering Currently. and housekeeping engineering and housekeeping um, online they respond to those yeah so oh, really? right now <clears throat> as it as it comes on we have a system called hot sauce that will start to integrate okay and hot sauce is is hilton proprietary it's software? not hilton proprietary okay, it's so just a hotel it's, it's a, a hotel, hotel digital platform so it's but uh, it is used to, to communicate interdepartment, and you can actually have your guests. That's incredible. There. It is. That's and really so, cool. so let's say, for example. Another example of more jobs being created. Absolutely. And, and refining the job that we had now. Correct. You know, before we had to have somebody walk the halls when they were looking for, you know, light bulbs out or things yep. like that. Literally, we have guests that can get on this platform and text us and say, you have a light bulb out on your floor. It's incredible. And so we send the engineers, we send the housekeepers where, where it needs to go. And so, again, it's empowerment. The guest feels empowered, you know. There's nothing better when the guest says, hey, uh, you know, my light bulb's out in my room. They haven't spoken to anybody. It was just a text message. And when they get back from whatever they're doing, the light bulb's fixed. Like, I, that's empowering. I can't tell you how, how exciting that is to know that you guys are incorporating that because those are the things, I mean, that, that's essentially the essence of this podcast. I mean, DoorDash, for example, is a delivery platform for restaurants. Mm -hmm. And we love DoorDash and we've incorporated DoorDash in our restaurant because they give you a play by play of where your food is. Sure. You know, and as a restaurant owner, it's very hard to outsource something like your food and delivery mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going to happen to it. Right. But I do know that the guest is going to get communicated that we've confirmed the order. Mm -hmm. I get a text message or a notification from the app. Your food has been now your driver has picked up your food. Now your food is good. So it's like I know that things are actually happening. And then that's that digital hospitality where I know that I didn't just send in, I didn't just call the restaurant and say, hey, you know, make sure to send my food. And then 45 minutes later, my wife and my kids are like, where's the food? I call them back. They go, oh, we never got your order. Like, that's the problem. Right. You know, that's a huge problem. But yeah. if you're telling me that I can text something and say, hey, you know, my air conditioning doesn't work in my unit. And by the time I come back from the pool, the air conditioning's on and it's the temperature that we want. Absolutely. And that's incredible. It is. And I'll go one more, you know, Hilton's really, they're working to integrate all systems. So uh, I mentioned digital key earlier, whereas you're, if you're a Hilton Honors member, you can, you can get a digital key, you can check in, you can pick your room, you don't even need to go to the front desk. Hilton is making it so down the road, you can control everything in your room from your phone. So you can control lights, you can control your air conditioning, you can even set your television to the screen that wow. you want when you come in. So again, And parental controls on that TV. Absolutely, 100%. Yep. We already have the ability to stream anything from any of your devices to the television to so YouTube anything, whatever you want Netflix any of those different types of things so you don't have to worry about renting movies and things like that so again when we talk about enhancing these are all enhancements of things that are already there mm -hmm. there are already things that this is amazing now it's going to be even more amazing when you can do these things and so when you talk about really the future of hospitality and traveling it can be an, as interactive as you want it to be if sure. you're one of those folks that just doesn't you know you, jet lag you've had a long flight you just don't want to talk to folks mm -hmm. but you want a beer in your room it's you can do that without speaking to anybody and you can enjoy yourself and then when you're ready you can come down and enjoy whatever kind of nightlife or social life that you're interested in and so again for us those are all you know obviously work smarter not harder mm -hmm. give the guests the experience that they're looking for and make sure that you're the leading edge in technology because it's just it's going to enhance the things that you have and to your point it's going to create jobs i don't i don't really believe it's going to take them away oh no I, I i'm i'm very adamant that it's going to create many jobs and it's going to create a lot of opportunity for people in the hospitality space that think you know they've they've always loved food or they've always loved beverage or they've always loved wine and it's like well how do i get into it because i'm not a chef you know, maybe I don't want to go to culinary school. Well, if you love technology, 
you can learn something that can certainly enable a certain property, that can enable a company to do things that they never thought were possible. Sure. I mean, and those are all opportunities. You know, when you're Absolutely. learning something on Twitter, that might be an opportunity to partner with a, a local tour group that's coming and they need 100 rooms for the night and the weekend. Right. You'd want them to stay at your hotel, right? 100%. And if you respond to that tweet, guess what? Somebody's going to be happy with that, that Absolutely. you just booked those rooms. 100%. Correct? Absolutely. Um, when, when did you fall in love with hospitality? I mean, was there a time when you were young? Early on. Uh, I've been doing this most of my life. I actually was framing houses while I was in school. Um, I started uh, setting rooms as a houseman during Christmas just to earn extra money. Uh, the Christmas season came and left, and I enjoyed it so much that I stayed. So it's really, it, it's, been for, it's been with me most of my life. I went and worked for freestanding restaurants for a little bit. I had a mentor early on that uh, I went to him one day and said, I was a houseman. I said, I want to be a food and beverage director. You know, what's your advice? Why did you want to be a food and beverage director? I like the interaction with guests. I love food. I love beverage. Like anytime you see people in any so the kind positive of animal, interaction or the, or the negative oh, interaction? Oh, the, the positive for sure. It. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. You know, anytime that you see people in restaurants and in, in hotels and bars, you know, 99% of the time they're, they're happy. They're having fun. It's a great time. They're celebrating something or other. And so for me, that was very intoxicating. I just was around it. And then, you know, as you're, as you're a food and beverage director or a banquet manager, whatever it is in the food space of a hotel, you, know, you have banquets that are going on. So it was, there was a lot of different things that led me to it. It just seemed natural for me. It was fun. It was, it was a place that I could be inventive and kind of do my own things here and there, you know. Uh, it was somewhere that I could develop people and develop myself. And it just, it always seemed like there was something to learn. It always seemed like there was something to do. Mm -hmm. And so I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed coming to work every day and having a new and different challenge. You know, some of them are the same, but for the most part, you know, my days are different every day. Every day. And I love it. And, you know, it's there. Don't get me wrong. There's days that are high stress, high intensity. And there's a lot of days that, you know, there's a lot going on. But for, you know, I think folks like us, that's what we really gravitate to is just the constant change and having fun and being able to do different things and not having somebody say, why are you doing it that way? And why didn't you do it this way? It, it's us taking the ownership and the empowerment to, you know, really drive our own business. Well, I think that's, I mean, that you couldn't have said it better. It's not, it's not, we have, yes, we make mistakes, sure. you know, and, but those are the learning opportunities, but because things happen so quickly and you have to think about what's next mm -hmm. and you always have to be planning for what's next. How do we make it in better? How do we, you know, create an experience that exactly what we said before is it's a memorable moment that someone's going to want to come and share, but every time it's different. It is. You know, every property is different. Every single event is different. You know, it could be a celebration of life. It could be a quinceanera. It could be a wedding. You, you just don't know. And each bride, each bride's br gr groom, the, each family is different. Sure. So how is that going to work out? And guess what? Things aren't going to go as planned. Yeah. You know, this is just the, the, the reality of life, the reality of business. And those are the challenges that we have to overcome. 100%. But those challenges that we overcome, we learn because the next time we're prepared. Right. Maybe we have something, you know, we have backup ice. We have extra ice because That's right. maybe our ice machine that we ordered that we thought could handle the capacity doesn't handle the capacity that we need. Are there any horror stories that you had in, at any of your times in any of these hotels um, that you've learned from? The one that sticks, the <laughs> one that sticks with me the most. I feel bad. Uh, I I promoted a captain. This was oh my gosh, seventeen. 20 years ago, I promoted a captain. It was his very first captainship. It was a wedding. Um, we had gotten done with the ceremony. Everything was good. The food was all taken care of. Uh, the bride had wanted some of the celebration punch at her table. And so my, <laughs> my captain got some of the celebration punch and took it to the table. And as he was walking towards the table, tripped no. and dumped an entire red, I mean, a big glass of red punch all over this young lady's white dress. Oh, no. So That's a memorable moment. It was very <laughs> memorable. Um, there's, you know, there was a, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of yeah. Um, what do you what do you clothes. do with that? Uh, she actually had some clothes that she could change into. So unfortunately, she at didn't the end have of a backup day, gown. Did no, she? she did not. And uh, <laughs> it, it her her gown was pink forever. Unfortunately. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah, we it was it was definitely um, a learning experience. So yeah, no. That's you know, I've always said that 
you, you learn the experience that sticks with you the most is the experience that you gain in the toughest challenges. Sure. And so wherever you're at, you know, I, I've been in challenges and I've been in situations where I've just been, you know what, this, this is awful and I can't believe this. And then once you get through it and, you know, it really tests the resiliency of your team and yourselves when you get through it, you think, oh my God, you know, I, that was an amazing experience. Amazing. How did we do it? Yeah, How exactly. did we pull it off? And then, you know, you sit down. 16 people called out. Exactly. <laughs> and yet you know, somehow we did it. Yep, we did, you know. And, it's, and it was flawless. It, it is. And you know, they had no idea what was happening behind you know, the scenes. If they only we knew, did, right? If they only knew, but we somehow <laughs> pulled it off. Right. That's really exciting. So what, are you still hiring or have we filled all positions? No. Um, in terms of the hotel, so... I'm always looking for good people. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, in my industry, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, we're always recruiting, you know. Always. I, I want people that are going to come in with passion, and I love collaborative atmosphere. So if you're going to come in and, you know, share with me things that you think are awesome and ways that we can improve, then, you know, I want you to be part of my team. So to answer your question, we're always looking. Um, you know, and I believe that's true through the whole entire hotel. I don't think you'd ever find somebody that says, no, nah, you know, I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah. What kind of process do you guys have for hiring? What's your... Uh, it starts with online applications, so you have to go to... Digital. Interstate. Yeah, digital. Oh, I'll say, I'll yeah. still. Yeah. And, you know, and it's interesting because, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you just, you really can't walk in any place anymore with a no. paper application. It's all digital, you know, and it has to do with being able, again, it's, it's to enhance, you know, a lot of folks think this, that, you know, it's, it's to be able to screen people. It's not necessarily to screen people, it's just to enhance the experience. Like, Correct. I want to be able to talk to the people that have the experience I'm looking for, first and foremost. And I think it's important for those people to be able to get FaceTime with the leaders so that you can connect on, you know, a little bit easier, a little bit easier of a playing field. I mean, hundred percent. We're, I mean, our restaurants in East County, San Diego, and people told us that there's no way that we can just only have a digital application. And we've proved them wrong time and time again, because right. we have no problem teaching someone, enabling them to understand this is how you set up an email. Sure. Like, and we'll do that the person doesn't even work for us. That's we'll bring amazing. them into the manager's office wow. and show them how to how to set up an email because it's that important. Yes. I mean, it's that important in 2019 that you understand that the world is moving forward mm -hmm. and people have internet in their pockets. They have smartphones in their pockets. And what can you do to make, because once you teach somebody how to do that and you enable them, mm -hmm. it turns on a light. It does. It turns on a light because you understand that like all these fears that you had, and that's really a lot of what happens in this digital world is that people are scared of a new app or they don't want to look stupid or I don't want to post something that, you know, is going to come back and bite me. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the more that you get over those fears, the more opportunities you find, Right. you know, especially when it comes to business. Right. And then, you know, knowing that Hilton is doing all kinds of things like this on such a global scale is really refreshing for someone like me because I know that we've had to do it as a small restaurant just to stay open. Sure. But if you're doing it on that level, think about how many people you can impact wow. and think about how many amazing experiences you can impact as right. well. Well, and, and, and you, you said something right there that is, is um, very near and dear to my heart. You know, when you talk about taking people that don't work for you and bringing them in and showing them technology and things like that, you're building loyalty right there. And that's showing that you care about people and their success. And if you show people that, that aren't even like, I don't even work for you, and I don't even mm -hmm. know if I'm going to work for you, but you're willing to put that commitment into me, like you're going to stop and show me how to set up an email 100%. so that I can go out and work anywhere in the world, that's amazing to me. And so when you say things like that, that is what technology is able enables us to do it can bring people together and it can build relationships as opposed to people thinking well it just destroys relationships it sure. doesn't. you just gave us an, an, an amazing example of a business leader promoting you know loyalty and also reaching out to the community because you're willing to help somebody that really doesn't have a commitment to you 100 percent. and that's amazing that's what i love well, the, i mean those are the things that are certainly exciting because i mean social media People have a fear, you know, and rightfully so. They have a fear, you know, if you're Domino's and you see that somebody's, you know, in your kitchen and they're filming a video of something that they shouldn't be filming and it goes viral or your Southwest, whatever, whatever company you might be, mm -hmm. that's the fear. Yes. You know, you fear the worst. But really, those are such small, tiny, tiny, tiny examples of the things that actually could go right. Right. You know, catching people in the act of doing things right. Right. You know, and letting people that work for you show why they're so excited to work for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Catch me at my best. Catch you at your best. Absolutely. Right. Right. What um what kind of philosophy do you teach your team here? It's all about learning. It's all about growing yourself as an individual. I feel like if you grow yourself as an individual, you're gonna you're gonna help me. You're gonna grow my business because it's again it's 
what, how can I help you get to where you're trying to go in life? And so if, if, I, if I'm showing you and teaching you all the things that you need to be successful at the Hilton and giving you all the tools that you need to be, you're going to take those tools, you're going to make my business successful, but you're also going to make yourself successful. And you're, more than likely, you're going to go out and talk to your friends and your neighbors about what we're trying to accomplish here. Hey, I told my boss I was only going to be there for a couple of years, and he said, great, where do you want to go and what can I do to help you get there? That's going to build you loyalty and things like that. So. My, my philosophy is always be learning, always be building, always be looking for the next new thing, be the leading edge. You know, I, I hate to say that we're constantly reinventing ourselves, but we are in a way. You yeah. know, if you want to be leading, if you want to be the people that are the servant leaders of the world and, and showing what it's like to be successful, then you're, you're, you're going to have to look at yourself on a consistent basis and you're going to have to ask questions about, am I going in the right direction? Are we doing the right thing? And if you have technology and you're applying it the right way, it's a tool that's going to help you answer those questions quickly instead of the old days where you had to look at business trends forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to be able to tell what you're doing by Yelp. You're going to be able to tell what you're doing by your cost trackers. You're going to be able to tell what you're doing by, you know, we have um, team member surveys once a year here in the hotel where it's all digital they tell us how they feel about the operation and the leadership anonymous yes absolutely um, all of that is going to help us make better decisions and really at the end of the day that's what it's about right again taking care of the guests taking care of the team members how do you go about getting press for your hotel um, it, it helps being Hilton sure, it sure <laughs> does. yeah absolutely so we have um, a PR firm that we work with crow yes crow I've heard of them they're, we've worked with them they're wonderful they're yeah. they're you know when we do these podcasts you know it will always do a digital deep dive and it must be nice when you work with professionals that know how to get you press absolutely because it's very helpful yes it is Marketing. to get your message out yes it is and, and to get the right message out Correct. right i mean you can you can plaster places with all kinds of information but it's the again it's the right message for the right guest at the right time and sure. that's what we're always trying to do and crow really helps us with that navigate you know what are we trying to accomplish and what do we think our guests are trying to accomplish and you know it's it's nice working with them well it's great well it's also a local firm sure so it's easy to go and hire a, hire a national firm but that national firm might not know the San Diego market right. the same way someone like Crow does mm -hmm. and I think that's you know it's very important for us and what we talk to other restaurant owners and bar owners about is nobody's gonna go out and come knocking down your doors to write stories about you. So you have to be willing to create that media yourself and mm -hmm. to develop those relationships yourself. Yes. Um, you know, that was one of the things for us. It was, you know, we, we thought that, oh, we, you know, we've been open for five years. It's just, you know, the newspaper's gonna come and write an article about us. It's not like that. You actually have to go out and use Twitter, use Instagram, use Facebook, use all these tools that we have to create relationships and make people care. Right. But you also have to be involved. Right. And actually, once we stopped caring about getting our own message out and started caring about other people's message in the community, the more opportunity started opening up for us, which is exciting. And that's kind of the philosophy of all the stuff that I've been reading that you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you care more about being the guide than mm -hmm. being the hero of the story. Right. And I think that's something that, you know, when people come here, that's what they're going to be able to take away. I believe. We want everybody to have a fond farewell. And again, it's, it's about the hub. And as long as the team members understand here, if somebody walks up and asks you a question, it's completely fine if you're going to suggest one of our competitors. As a matter of fact, I want somebody to go and see what it's like to come back because in our eyes, it's just going to broaden people's horizons. It's going to get people out of their um, comfortable boxes and have them try other things. Yep. And then in doing that, they're going to feel comfortable with what we're trying to tell them instead of it's just we're trying to guide them in a direction we think is best. That's not true. We're trying to guide you in a direction that you think is best. And again, to your point, we're just the guide. We're just just here to, to help get you where you're trying to go. 100%. Um, anything that you'd like to tell our guests when they come down to come visit you? If anyone listening to the podcast? You know, make sure that you, you try all the venues. Make sure you step outside of the box and try everything on the menu that you can. Um, and, and really... And enjoy the technology when you're here. Use it to the fullest, the fullest extent. Make sure that when you're in the hotel that you go up to Above Ash and you see what's going on up there mm -hmm. and that you go out into Little Italy and that you go out into San Diego and, and you, you witness what's going on downtown because it's an exciting place. There's a lot of things going on. And so um, 
We want to be a hub. We want you to come and enjoy us, but we want to do it in a non-intrusive way that you're also comfortable enjoying other things in San Diego and coming back and sharing those stories with us, because that's really what we want to hear, is how has this impacted your life? How has it impacted you? Was it everything that you wanted it to be? If it wasn't, is there anything that we can do to help? And, and that's really, at the end of the day, what, what I want people to take away. I think there's something important to what you said earlier is that you had to be, you have to be willing to always be improving. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I would give you credit for is your, have your LinkedIn profiles up to date. And I think that's something as a busy professional as yourself, you have 500 things going. Now you have, you now you have this huge task to get everything open and ready for the grand opening, but you're still care enough to know that your digital profile matters Absolutely. and other people that are looking at the curio collection, looking at the Carte hotel, they will go through there and they'll see, well, who's Chance Rock? Mm -hmm. And you having that up-to-date profile means a lot. Um, I think that's something that, you know, there's always an excuse why not to do it, right? Sure. There's always an excuse that, oh, we shouldn't do it or we don't need to do it. But um, at the end of the day, that's just another tool. It's another tool in your chest and it's another tool for your hotel. It's another tool for people that might want to come and work here. Absolutely. You know, they're going to come and look and they're going to find out, well, Wow, you're a rock star. Look how many trophies the Hilton and the Marriott have given you. We were joking before the podcast started. You need a trophy room for all these all these hospitality awards you've won. You know, I couldn't do it without the team, to be <laughs> honest with you, in all of my locations. So I, I've been fortunate to be uh, associated with and also build some great teams. And so you know, I take a little bit of the credit, but very little. You know, yeah. you, can, you can't be successful without the folks around you. And uh, how do people find you guys on social? Uh, Thecartehotel.com. Uh, Facebook is... At, at Car Carte at Hotel. Car yeah, at, Car at Carte Hotel. At Carte Hotel. That's what the, that's what the team's for, Yeah, that's right? what the team's for. That's what the team's for, Crow PR. Nice These, looking out. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been amazing. Um, thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for choosing San Diego. Thank you for choosing Little Italy. It's a place, obviously, um, growing up in San Diego my whole life, it's, we, all, we always want leadership here, and we always want great people, great hoteliers, great hospitality, great leaders coming here um, to show off the city. Like I said, San Diego markets itself, but it's always better when there's people that are um, embracing technology, embracing digital, and doing the things that you guys are doing to, um, to bring quality talent here, you know, and to create those memorable moments that we're talking about. So congratulations on your success. We can't, we can't wait to see what, um, what you guys do. Uh, we're going to be watching both physically and digitally, see, see um, how, you, how your brand grows and uh, the imprint that you guys make on San Diego. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And Absolutely. Well. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yep.